<laughs> Hello, friends on Instagram and YouTube. I'm just waiting for the ladies, to, the glamorous ladies of History After Dark, to follow me over to the Instagram so that I can let them come and talk to us for this <laughs> den of geeks. No, not den of geeks, den of gits. That's what we're doing. It's a, it's a gitty fairies time. I've got one. One's arrived. Oh, hello. Hello. Just the one of you. Oh. <laughs> it's not letting me let anybody up. Oh, hello. Hello. Yeah, this, hello. this is slightly on the wonk, isn't it? Or is that just me? I don't. I don't know. I think it's fine. Oh, well. <laughs> People, let, let me know if it's it's i'm slightly drunk you're slightly drunk if, if it looks like i'm slightly oh. drunk oh, no, okay. this is not a drinking game we'll get there we'll get there yes. hello philippa hello we are all men i'm i'm concerned so, that my normal panel is not showing me that we are on on youtube oh well then it's well, what I, I can see in the chat. Oh, yeah, if someone could put it in the comment, yes, please. If someone can put it in the comments, if we are live on YouTube, that'd be very useful. Usually, I have a uh, I'll, um, like a live, you know, button. I can see it. Light. Pretty Pick says, oh. We're here. We're here. Okay. We're all Yay. here. Okay. We are good. all met. Good. We're all met. Good. Yeah. Don't know. It's giving me the edit button. I'm not exactly in the, in the same place as that I normally would have my on uh, live light. I'm not going to touch it because I think. I don't think this is the evening for that. No, we're, we're, <laughs> we're not going to. We're not going to finish. Now it's not the time. Um, I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to do, do it. Uh, hello, do friends. Thing. It's 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 twenty past eight now because of technical difficulties because the Mercury's in retrograde and um the sun is high in the sky. I don't know words. Uh, this is history after dark. We call it that because it's it fits now because it's winter, so it's dark for us. But it mm -hmm. also fits because we do like to impart historical knowledge. But while doing so, we want the freedom to use four-letter expletives, vulgarity, and just generally lean into smut where smut appears. We want to laugh at the innuendos in your endo. With that being said... This is not for all audiences. So if you happen to be in an open plan office with a judgmental boss who has feelings about four letter expletives, then put a headphone in. We don't want you to get your disciplinary. We've got merch for you to buy. So you need a wage. Um, also, if you're in a car, a kitchen or on a sofa with a small child, this child is a problem. We call this child Timmy. Merch, Timmy as is. said, Timmy is a problem. Timmy is the kind of child who hears one revolting thing once. You don't know he's heard it. He locks it away in his mind palace. He takes it with him to school. He talks to his teacher. He calls his teacher Miss Honey. We call her Miss Honey. That's what she looks like. It's like the woman from Matilda. Miss Honey is a lovely lady. Miss Honey does not watch Had, so she does not know the first cardinal rule of Had, which is, friends, if you don't know what it means, don't Google it. It's not for you. It's not for you. So Miss Honey Googles this thing, and then you get phoned up at school to find out why Timmy knows this depraved nonsense, and also why Miss Honey is now crying in the supply closet and needs six weeks of therapy that you're going to have to help pay for. It's awkward for all, um, and you ain't got that kind. Of, you ain't got therapy money. That is expensive I need it for myself, not someone yeah. else. We all need too much therapy to be paying for somebody else's. Ain't nobody got that therapy money um, <laughs> for someone else. Get therapy if you can afford it. Um, but. So that's why we say put a headphone in. You can also watch us on the playback, either on the Instagram or the YouTube. We say that. It's always best to watch us live because there's always a potential that we might say something that is so unspeakably depraved, more than usual, that it's I borderline. I did take my live off last <laughs> You live end up last taking week. it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Philippa got a bit of history after dark on her live. Um, so if that, if, if we go... Brilliant. So she's already crossed a line. In her yeah. in her online content, so we are potentially due her to cross another line in this online content, which means it could be so so rotten that we have to yeet the footage into the sun for all of our livelihoods and possibly for us to stay out of prison. So it's always best to watch us live. With that being said, we are here to talk about some of history's gits. One in particular, we are on history git v. Um, I've already mm. said if you don't know what it means, don't Google it. It's not for you. On top of that, while we fervently wish and hope that everybody here is is an adult that there are no minors in the crowd um 
this is not a drinking game. But you're all grown up, so if you want to use it as such, crack on. We don't endorse that message. We aren't responsible for your renal function. And last, by no means least, if you put something foolish in either our live chat or in our comment sections afterwards, we may call you out on it, but don't bank on it because we have seen people who have got some kind of humiliation kink who are putting things in the comments that is so just blatantly foolish that what you want is for us to pin your comments so that other people can call you names and then you can, I don't know, have some kind of masturbatory ex experience. Have your kinks. That's fine. But everybody needs to be consenting. And if you're not consenting to the kink, don't involve people. That's just gross. With that being said, let's talk about a massive git, shall we, ladies? Who have we got today? Mm. Right. We oh, have got a, the mother. The, the mother, mother of all. Of Queen, yeah. yeah. The mother of, if Queen Victoria caused every world war since World War One, <laughs> then the, let's go <laughs> back to what her brain. mother was like. Yes. This is this is the font. <laughs> this is literally, she is the apex the apex yeah. Victoria. Just want to point out that I do like. have a royal mug. Um, that's the wedding mug of oh. William and Catherine. So there we go. Oh, oh I remember watching that with my friend yeah. Derry, my little tiny Oscar. Well, speaking of weddings, know. just very very quickly, uh, people were congratulating me last week on getting married. I didn't. I didn't get married. <laughs> I just changed my name. Just as um, as a heads up, if you're considering changing your name by deed poll, just to let you know, it is absolute fucking ball ache. <laughs> Catherine's been having a time. It's, got, last... it's still got to be easier than getting married, no? <laughs> I mean, that's a ball I'm ache. not sure. If I'm you just, sure. you just walk up a thing and say, yeah, all right, then, and you leave, that's much quicker. Yeah, the stuff that, the stuff that okay. Catherine's been going through these last few weeks, I mean, my, right. getting married is way easier, way easier. But yes, so just yeah. for a, a, press, a, a variety of different reasons, I changed my surname. I was going to keep Brooks as my professional name and then decided I was getting a bit bored of that as well. So for, <laughs> a, short time, yes, for a short time, I will still answer to both. But the time will come where I might not. So yeah. you know, I mean, you've answered answer to all sorts. sorts. Yeah, you, you, yeah. <laughs> we don't. Don't, don't kid <laughs> us. <laughs> Lady I'm Muck really over just, here. I I'm choose really what just, I answer to. I whatever. <laughs> Shall yeah. I curtsy on my way it's out? Like when I was changing it and I was trying to think what to put, Gareth Street I said, just change it to Catherine H and see if anyone. I was like, I wish I'd done that now, but I'm not doing it again. So, um, no. Um, Becky's asked, how do you pronounce your new name? I believe it's Ibbotson, isn't it? It is Ibbotson, Ibbotson. yes. Ibbotson. Mm -hmm. The Lady Ibbotson, Lady Muck. <laughs> Lady Muck over here. <laughs> Her Grace, the but Duchess. As, 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 I, as I know from the sort of extended family, like it's um, it gets pronounced all sorts of ways. And I said, oh, you always have to spell it. I have never had to spell my surname as much in my life. And you don't even use oh. it that often, do you? Really, you know. And more, I think, in the last three and a half months since I did it than for the entire rest of my life. I think. <laughs> yeah, I've done it. Now. I constantly. So I just. H I don't even. Have, have I don't even wait. H would have been a better choice. <laughs> Pretty Pick said that she thought I was Lady Muck. No, darling, I'm a mucky lady. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mucky bitch. That's what's happened. That's why we're all here to share in yeah. the filth. So who's starting with this wench? I love that word. Me. I'm going to tell you a little bit about where, about where uh, the font Princess of evil of font Victoire. Is yeah, where the mother is not popular. The, the mother of all. <laughs> Bad mothers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no one she... did put her or Sarah Churchill. Mm. Which would you pick? As your mum. Mm. Actually, Sarah Churchill's mm. children at least seemed. Um, it was easier for them to get away. They were more ready for the world, I think, than possibly Victoria was. But I'm sure we'll get to that. Um, so I don't know. I mean, she's saying you... Victoire, Victoria or Sarah Churchill, are wolves the fourth option? Because I think <laughs> I'd rather be raised by wolves. There's so well, many comments. I don't do a bad job with Romulus and Remus. So. Is it Lawson? I don't know if I okay. pronounced it wrong. But I'd okay. rather be an orphan. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Coming in strong. <laughs> Sometimes. That's the right answer. 
<laughs> not often. <laughs> Although Lorcan has made a, 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 sorry if that's not how you pronounce your name, has made a good point. At least Sarah will love you once you die. <laughs> mm, that's true. I think it's so will Queen Victoria. She also loves you when you yes, die. They are. But I, and I wonder if she learned that from Victoire. Maybe these are two, maybe these are birds of a similar feather. Are they in fact potentially blood related? I mean, there's so much inbreeding in this. Oh, and, well, we will. I mean, it could is Sarah Churchill a mind related? boggling. Or one channeling the other. Yeah. Distantly, um, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, pretty pick. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I thought of that just as I said that Romulus did kill Remus, indeed. So maybe not the best. <laughs> anyway, so, so everyone's a prick today, apparently. Although <laughs> everyone's killing everyone Romulus. Else. Romulus and, did all right over the uh, situation. Romulus did do okay. I yeah, mean, he, made he went on so... and founded. Yeah, <laughs> did. fine. And Remus his, was dragging uh, him is... down. Kill that boy. <laughs> <laughs> kill wow. your brother. <laughs> Sometimes. It's just what's necessary. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> let's go. So Princess Victoire, um, actually born Marie-Louise Victoire, uh, was born on the 17th of August, 1786 in Coburg, um, which was still under the Holy Roman Empire at that time, which I found quite interesting. Um, I didn't want to go down that wormhole, though, so I'm sorry. I can't tell you any more about that. But I thought, wow, still under the Holy Roman Empire. So there you go. Mm. Um, she's one of seven children and this immediately well and you'll see as we go through uh the web that is this family tree really is like no other so there's two um two of her brothers um who are relevant to the story as as we go through so she's one of seven she has um four brothers i think it was including ernest who becomes the first duke of sax coburg gotha um, and Leopold, both of them come back into the story. He was uh, the future king of the Belgians. Um, now, in uh, December 1803, she marries her uncle by marriage. <laughs> it started already. <laughs> um, Prince, <laughs> Prince Charles of... L oh, did this just before we came on live. Leningen. 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 Leiningen? Leiningen. Leiningen. Anyway, we asked my husband place. who can pronounce things and he told us and then we've forgotten because yeah. <laughs> we got into talking about how Sarah Church was a bitch again. There's, yeah, we've got there's a lot of there's a lot of um um there's a lot of um yeah, vowels. Anyway, so yeah, so so <laughs> Prince Charles of Leiningen well, uh, then again had been married to her aunt. Anyway, she died. So uh, so he he married Princess yeah. Victoire and um, very quickly got about it because nine months later she gave birth to a son, another Charles. Sorry, excuse me, not Charles, Carl indeed. Um, and three years after that, a daughter, Princess Theodora. So these are going to be um, Victor uh, Queen Victoria's half siblings mm. um so when um prince charles dies um uh victoire actually acts as regent for her son until he um about comes of age at which point there is um an issue going on with the british side of the family <laughs> The bit of the bit of the German family who came over um, to take out our throne, oh. and she um, she comes over to marry the fourth son of George the Third, um, uh, Prince Edward, Duke of Kent, and Strathairn, because they all had also a Scottish title, it seems. Mm. Um, and they were married on the twenty ninth of May. Well, actually, they all had they had two weddings. They'd have one in Germany and one in in England. So they get married twice, and this happens with some of the other siblings as well. So 29th of May, 1818, in Coburg, and then on the 11th of July at Kew. And um, the ceremony at Kew was actually a joint ceremony. So the two bro those two brothers who got married that day. So. Um, uh, Prince Edward, Duke of Kent, gets married to our Victoire and his brother, William, the Duke of Clarence, 
and St Andrews, there's his Scottish title, um, married Adelaide of Saxe Minningen. <laughs> I hope you're all paying attention to this because there's a test at the end. Well, so the reason there's a reason wow. why there's weddings. Um, going on at this point now he's the duke of kent by this point is already 51 and this is the first time it's very funny because i, I read something today that said and he thought it was about time he did get married he's 51 um <laughs> princess victoire is 32 so and she already has two two children so you know maybe so maybe there's Fair a thought process going on there yeah. um um, before this, um, the Duke of Kent has been having a fabulous time um, around the world uh, with the military and um, just, just taking mysteries left, right, and centre, which was very similar to actually his brothers as well. So, but anyway, there's a reason why, a very tragic reason why the Duke of Kent gets married. He might have said he was about ready, but actually, him and his brothers are forced stroke incentivized <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> to inseminate, well, to find a wife, to ditch the mistress and find the wife, and the the reason for this is the death of um, uh, Princess Victoire's sister in law, Princess Charlotte of Wales, who'd married her brother, who I mentioned earlier. Not Charlotte's brother. Um, <laughs> like that. No, sorry, not my Charlotte's brother. Charlotte had married, had married <laughs> Princess Victoire's <laughs> brother. Quite that bad. Yeah, Leopold. So anyway, so so. So the, the families are already linked. So her, her brother Leopold had, had married um, Princess Charlotte. Princess Charlotte was the only, she was actually the only legitimate grandchild at this point of George III. So George III's son, George, sorry, but another George, the Prince Regent, um, who would become George IV. He, um, we spoke about them before, I'm sure. We, we spoke about him, didn't we? And his, um, and his wife. They have one daughter that was Charlotte and then they separated soon after her birth never to be um reconciled in any well in any way really <laughs> it was she, a fucking she, disaster that marriage it was it was just the the um the episode on that I think is probably quite entertaining um <laughs> so Princess Charlotte is a tonic to her <laughs> the rest of the Hanoverian family she is pleasant pretty she likes to wear roses in her hair she is the, probably the, the sweetheart of the nation literally and her marriage to leopold seems very happy she actually chooses leopold mm. he he comes over to brighton she 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 sees him and she actually kind of instigates and she wants to marry him so charlotte and leopold have this very happy marriage um she falls pregnant fairly quickly, but suffers a miscarriage. But she falls pregnant again quite quite quickly, and um, and enough that the pregnancy could be announced in April eighteen seventeen. There are concerns over her health, but I think some of these might be a little bit in retrospect. Apparently, she's not doing much exercise. She's eating too much, and they oh, do her, the, yeah. the of course, which of course. they clearly from their portraits all did. So um, I don't think there was anything particularly unusual. But, however, they did therefore treat her, hmm. treat her things like diets, but bleeding and stuff, all this stuff that, anyway, um, mm. isn't good. So not only that, that might be a bit of a red herring because her due date is the 19th of October. She goes over her due date and doesn't actually go into labour until the 3rd of November. So I suppose technically it could be the 40 weeks mark, but it's it's considered that she's she's very large by this point and and it's it's a concern. Yeah. Um she thought she goes into labor and the labor is lasting going into a second day, going into a third day, and it's it's really concerning. On the 5th of November, in the evening, nine o'clock, she she does she gives birth to a boy, a fully grown boy but unfortunately he's he's born um he's, he's it's a stillbirth um and princess charlotte for her 
for going to having gone through all that actually is quite stoic she sees it as god's will she's very you know she has her faith leopold bless him has been up with her for the entire time he takes an opioid and goes and goes and retires so he goes to sleep and that unfortunately was the last time that he would see charlotte alive within a few hours she is being violently sick she's bleeding she's cold to the touch she is feeling drunk um she's in really severe pain and she, she yeah she's having trouble breathing and and unfortunately she dies now with the death of charlotte two generations have been completely wiped out yeah. and the only legitimate grandchild grandchild and what would have been the great grandchild so they were looking they were on the eve of having the succession kind of sussed and sorted and it is completely wiped out this only leaves then george the third's children now um his queen charlotte charlotte mm. don't know the charlotte yes mm -hmm. um had done a very good job of producing a lot of babies but all these babies by this point are either the girls are past childbearing age. The youngest male is 40. So they've basically all grown up <laughs> partying as far as I can work out yeah. and not really, not really treating anything with much seriousness as, as well. Maybe there's a bit of a diffusion of responsibility because there was so many of them. Um, and so this is this is known now that, that, that as a succession crisis or at the time you know, this is a succession crisis and the the boys are told the, the the ones who the sons that aren't married are told to ditch their mistresses and this is like this is in the papers this is this is the public as well and the press pushing for them to make legitimate marriages and have some legitimate children so you have a bizarre <laughs> race to it's like a weird grand national, but everyone's got their <laughs> a out. very weird grand national. <laughs> and and so this is when our Princess Victoire is proposed to by the Duke of Kent, by Edward Duke of Kent, and they have this double ceremony at Kew with his younger brother. No, his who did I say it was? With his well, elder I brother. I think he's, he's older, yeah, isn't William, he? Yeah. His elder brother. Yeah. Um, and um, so they marry in May 1818, and their only child, Princess Alexandrina Victoria, is born a year later on the 24th of May 1819. Um, the Duke of Kent dies on the 23rd of January 1820. So when a, when the baby Victoria is only what's that, six, seven months old or so. So there's no more children. Um Interestingly, two of the other brothers do manage successfully to sire some children. Um, so Victoria has two cousins. There's two boys actually born. So Prince uh, George of Cambridge. Um, uh, not our one. Not, not our one. one. Not our one. But there was some more before. Uh, was born on the 26th of March, 80, this is all 1819. Um, and um, another, hang on, which way around? Yes, and another Prince George is born on the 27th of May, 1819. Now, call me cynical, <laughs> uh, but they're both called George. And <laughs> I think there was a reason why they were looking for an, to get another George V, but because of Victoria's father's seniority in the in the um the sons of george the third it was her who was next in line to the throne mm. now if she hadn't have survived there was these these two other um other boys uh, her cousins who actually they lived into into old age and on the death of william the fourth victoria does not become queen she can, becomes queen of Great Britain, whatever, but she doesn't become Queen of Hanover. At that point, the um, that dual monarchy splits because Han in Hanoverian law, the a, a woman cannot succeed to the throne, and so that that goes to um, to the son of Ernest Augustus, who becomes George V. Well, no, he becomes king, and then Henry. 
his son becomes mm. king. But yeah, so I hadn't realised that there had been a, two other babies successfully sired during that yeah. ridiculous baby race. <laughs> but so there you go. So Vic, our Princess Vic, Victoire, her marriage, and actually Queen Victoria, who becomes Queen Victoria, her daughter, only exists due to the death of Princess Charlotte. What a tangled web we weave. Mm. Well, first we practice to shag our cousins. Yeah, that's that's it's, it for I, mean, I could if I went into the list of the <laughs> the brothers and the sisters, to be fair, and who they married. And then yeah. when you think then when you think how so nasty. Because of course Victoria marries her cousin as well. So if you then think they have nine children and they all marry cousins. Not all. Well, it makes me feel a little bit unwell. I can't lie. Mm. Yeah. So the web begins there. Yeah. That's what happens when you have so many children and you don't marry them. Or you marry them into the same family, clearly. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't doesn't end well. V vis a vis start Russia. well. Yeah. V vis Russia. Russia. Um doesn't, doesn't doesn't end well there. No. no. Um, so there you go. Well, thank you for that, Philippa. I I didn't know about the other babies either. That's really interesting. Yeah, it, and I think it's because yeah. you're going to be doing the next bit. So I think it's worth flagging that what? there are two boys, and at least one of their fathers is known to be an absolute fucking menace, <laughs> an absolute fucking menace, um, and potentially a very real threat to Victoria is what I'm going to say. It is, we're going to be talking about her mother who, who is paranoid, but what I'm going to say here, I'm going to flag it because let's be clear. I'm playing devil's advocate because this woman is trash. She's straight trash, but <laughs> just because you're paranoid, it doesn't mean they're not out to get you. Just True, because you're yeah. paranoid, it doesn't mean that they aren't going to try to assassinate the female heir to the throne so that their son can mount up in her place. Just saying. Just saying. Breathe, Kat. Breathe through it. <sighs> bit of context, though. It's a bit, a bit of... Bit of, bit of uh, um, is it word of the week time? Um, it yes, would be, but I haven't no. got that. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I got sent a word of the week. I got sent a word of the week. Ah! And I've also got one. So I got sent to the word of the week by Kathy in my emails. Um, and the word of the week I was sent was actually a um, reel on Facebook. by, And it's a guy who's also on, on the TikTok, because I follow him on the TikTok. And uh, his name is Abraham Piper. And his he was talking about the origin of the word... And I know you're going to know this, ladies. So I have also got a backup as well. Um, the word frig. Oh. And, <laughs> and to frig. And I think Kathy Well, the reason I did that. What if I, I what it asked, meant? Well, it was one of the first words I asked my mom what it meant. But I was little. <laughs> can you imagine? Don't Google what it. Did she say? What did she well, say? She said, don't Google it, Philippa. She said, don't. Because well, do yeah. Well, Google didn't exist. Oh, those are the days. Um, do you want to know what she actually said? What did she say? Yeah. She said, it's female masturbation. That was very... That, that is absolutely, yeah. So frig, or so when you say, oh, it's not that... People think it's a kind of substitute, not a real word for saying fuck. No, it's also <laughs> refers to something connected uh, so someone being frigging this, frigging that, so it's basically a wanker. <laughs> Female wanker. A lady wanker. <laughs> um, I do have another one from, because what would it be if I was doing a word of the week without the wondrous, get your cat out, can, got my cat out, <laughs> flapping my cat in the breeze. There we are. Um <clears throat> I wonder yeah, what then. that comes up as on the um, captions, closed captions. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that actually captures it properly. That's a problem for <laughs> another person to deal with. <laughs> um, a tuft hunter. <laughs> oh, well, that... A tough okay. Hunter. Is this rude or not rude? I have I have two two 
ideas. Well, de- de- define, is it, is it, does it refer to something smutty? No. Is it rude? Yes. Tough oh, okay. hunter. How is it rude but not smutty? Well, it's it's an insult. Well, like oh, clean, just... like clean line rude. Clean so line. I was thinking along the lines of a molehill hunter, so a, like a rodent control type person. No, no, no. Tuft hunter. Somebody who has a, 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 something, a, to, some particular hairstyles. A um cat more than hair. Um Beth, not freak, frig. Yeah, F R I G. Yeah. Uh frig. is it someone who makes the um oh god, what they're called? Downstairs wigs. <laughs> not a merkin Mer- maker. Mer- a not, not, not a purveyor maker. of merkins. No, shall I tell you, ladies? Uh, yes. It is a, a parasite. Oh one, no. <laughs> one who courts the no the acquaintance of nobility whose caps are adorned with a gold tuft. Ah, well. You can't go wrong with a gold tuft, can you? Well, no. <laughs> Everyone's in the comments. Thanks for the clarification. The frig stroke. If you find yourself going to say frig, you have to catch yourself and go freak. That's why people say freak in this and freak in that, I think. Oh, Frick no. is another well, we, one. That's we've up. we've Frick, taught yeah, my, like Frick, we've taught my yeah. son to say fee fan <laughs> because he started dropping the f bomb, and so we've we've rerouted it to fee fan, which is a swear word in I think either Swedish or Norwegian. <laughs> that does no, oh! but no one he knows knows those languages. So he he <laughs> that's like <laughs> fucking Finland again like that other time. The other day I'm in fucking he was talking Finland. he was talking to his friends his his friend's grandma <laughs> the other day and she was saying how's your day been Gabby and he went oh, I had a sad day and she was like oh no why he's like well I'm holding this child at this point and he goes I had a bad day so I just said fuck and I'm like <laughs> Timmy, I mean, Timmy? he's learning coping mechanisms. What can Timmy. you know? They're going to come uh, to him eventually. So he says feet yeah. fan now, um, which gets okay. us in less trouble at the daycare. This is why I talk about Timmy because I have my very own. Yeah, mine um, has their has their moments as well. Um, oh, mine are too old to uh, have any control of any sort whatsoever. I don't, now. I don't, I don't have any control. <laughs> To our world. <laughs> I've done my best. Now you deal with it. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> oh dear. But, but it's just yeah, it's got just sort of teenage stuff at the minute. Although one of the teachers might require a word from me in her ear. Oh, but anyway. Look, well, send me round. I'm looking for. I need. Give me an excuse. <laughs> looking give for it. A, looking for give trouble. Me a reason. Give me a reason. Give me a reason. reason. Right. Catherine, let's go. Lady yes. Mark, do you want to deal well with it? now? Yes, Woman, address, address me properly, or I'm not interested. The Lady of Ibbotson, La- Lady of Ibbotson, the Lady of Ibbotson, the Lady of Ibbotson. Um, okay, so the reason we are talking about this lady actually, we will obviously be talking about her, but we are looking very much at her close friend, comrade, association, partner in crime. <laughs> Um, bloke she got stuck with idiot she associated herself with choose the words really because we're going yes. to be talking about Conroy okay so um, yeah so what we have I don't know where to start with this idiot it's um, really quite quite worrying so it's so a John Conroy so you may know who Conroy is and we will talk about him quite fervently over the course of the next sort of 15 minutes or something um, but really Do I do this bit at the end? Yeah, I think I will. What we see is this relationship, not that type of relationship, but relationship that um, he he, um, builds with the Duchess of Kent is so ridiculously, inappropriately damaging 
to um, the Duchess of Kent's daughter, Victoria, that it's really, I think, hard to put into words that the potential could have been possibly even worse than it was. So although this the topic of this evening's room, obviously, or this conversation is... Um, with uh, Victoria, the Duchess of Kent, we will be talking probably a little bit more overall about Sir John Conroy. Um, mm -hmm. It's a shame we already had a space in our git list because that guy, wowzers. So, yeah, yeah it's a shame. So we could we do a mop up session. <laughs> The git, the git, it's special it. mention. He's our Christmas special mention. He is, he is. He's the git that we put on top. He is the Grinch that gitted Christmas. I mean, like, the, the more I was kind of, like, reading it, she, she was, if I'm being honest, she's coming off overall and what I had in my head at the start slightly less worse. He, however, with every single thing I wrote, made me want to get my time machine back. No. Go back in time, no, find not, him. No, no, And just, no, no, give him some side eye from no. behind a bush. You're not going Where no anywhere. one sees me and then come back. Okay, that, well, what I'm going to say is, what I'm going to say is, he may have been a dick but let us never forget she was the duchess of kent she was the mother of the heir she was victoria's mother she had a responsibility conroy I, was I absolutely am... he had no power apart from what and she fucking gave him i am going and to come to that had, i am and she had already been the mother of the 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 prince of lening um, <laughs> and, 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 and had the place it wasn't. I'm just. I, I, yeah. I just. I'm, I'd rather completely mess it up than mess it up just a little bit. Um. So she knows what's involved. Yeah. In being She's done regent. regency. Mm -hmm. She's done mm -hmm. regency for four years. And let's remember, so, Victoria's not on the heir. throne yet. Victoria's just being brought up. Mm. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Catherine. Get get her. Get her. Every time we finished, I'm quite happy to wait until. <laughs> Get her. No, get her, get her, go on, Please get her. put enter the moustache twiddling villain. Mm. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's just Victoria. That's just Victoria. She had a, a lustrous, just, right, full beard. Um, lustrous <laughs> full beard. Full okay, beard. so Sir John Cormoy was born on the 21st of October 1786 at Carehome in Carnarvonshire, and um, he was properly educated in Dublin. Of course, he was. His father had a great name. John Ponsonby Conroy. Of course he did. That's, that's the that's a bad start. That isn't it? I mean, that's a bad start before you even get out the door. And um, his mother was a woman called Frances Vernon Wilson of Tully. So they were his parents. Congratulations right. to them. He did a blinding job. Yeah, you shouldn't have bothered, mate. You really made up both their names. Actually, you shouldn't have bothered. You shouldn't have bothered. So he seemed to, on the surface, have had a reasonable success, a success which is like success but better, as a military man, which was still fairly important in those days. But like with many things in his life, he kind of sat on the coattails of other people a little bit. And then he would sort of pull in, well, I know that person, I know that person, and ride on that a little bit as well. So although he kind of did okay, never blindingly, but okay, he would always, you know, there was quite a bit, he, when he married, um, he did well via the associations he's made. I've forgotten to write his wife's name down. It's probably out of pity. Mrs. Yeah, Conroy. let's not associate her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like it wasn't her fault, fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, so whatever her name was, poor thing, her. But, you know, her family had military connections and some money and bits and pieces, you know. So um, I didn't really talk much about that because it's not massively relevant to how much of a prick he was in this instance. <laughs> but anyway, um, in 1817, he was appointed an equerry, so like a personal assistant of somebody in a royal household or a court to Prince Edward, the Duke of Kent who we know Victoire, Victoria, Mummy Victoria. Mummy Victoria? Should we call her Mummy Victoria? Mummy Vic. Mummy Vic. Yeah, so, you know, so obviously she was the eventually the, the husband, wife of him. <laughs> <laughs> so it's appointed equerry to Prince Edward, Duke of Kent, who Mummy Vic is, is, is married to. Kent. <laughs> And he's the Duke of Kent and Strathern. Philip said we go back to the Scottish titles again. He was the fourth son of John the Third. So you're quite far down the knockings by that point, aren't you? It's a bit like, eh. 
George III, not John the Third. John's Conroy. Uh, yes, George the Third. So uh, the Duke of Kent was yeah. the fourth son of yeah, of um, yeah. George the Third. And um, he'd been recommended for this post by his wife's uncle. So well done him again. I bet he didn't get any Christmas cards after that. But yes, in 1818, as of um, there was a marriage, and then in 1819, little Victoria was born. In 1820, the Duke dies. It's not going great, is it? And Victoria, Mummy Vic, takes this idiot on as the controller of her household. And he, two years later from that, retired from the army on half pay. But presumably he was getting very well paid um, work, working as her twat in chief. <laughs> so they became closer. Now, the thing is, is all the stuff we've been talking about earlier about um, her being, you know, she was a mother. Yeah, I think what happened is, is that neither of them were very popular, like him, for all of the reasons that are obvious. And in her case, she still didn't speak very good English. She did not want to. So she didn't integrate very well. She didn't want to be there. She wanted to go home, but Leopold the First, mm. her, um, her brother, would not let her come back. Plus, of course, she was the mother to somebody who was very likely to be the heir. I had a good chance at this point of being the heir, so they probably wouldn't have wanted her gone anyway. Or if she had have gone, she would have lost her daughter and possibly never seen her again. So it wasn't the most fabulous set of options. Mm. Her husband was terrible with money. You know, she wasn't necessarily in the best place in terms of a lot of these things. So I suppose at this juncture, if someone like Conroy comes along at this juncture and, you know, has experience and knows people and says, well, I can I have some ideas that might help you bring your daughter up. Well, you might go, well, oh, look, I'm going to hear him out. I'm going to see what he's got to say. <laughs> look, just just go along and then, and then he opens his those bag of tricks face and it just and the bag me. starts screaming as the pits of hell come out of it <laughs> I'm, and I'm, anybody I'm else trying. goes close that fuck off <laughs> I, I, i'm trying i know you are to... you're trying to <laughs> you're trying to look at this from from different perspectives yes and, um, and but... i will if before you implode I will come back to highlight you will. how much of a, a, a clusterfuck her parenting was at the end. Don't worry. <laughs> if I, like, I, I can help you sort out your son's tantrums, I'd be like, yes, I'll hear you out. When they bring out the fucking shock collar, I go, you need to leave my house and possibly London before I beat you bloody. Okay. Just saying, just saying. Okay. Just saying. There anyway. was a shock collar. I've, I'm, that's that's hyperbolic. I've gone over the top there. There was an actual <laughs> torture. I'm aware. I'm aware. Well, there was, but it's not physical. Okay, carry on. <laughs> carry on. Back in my box. I'm sorry. I've got air rated. I just I find child neglect a little bit triggering. <sighs> sorry. I feel if I'm a bit scared. It's, it's not you. I'm not. It's not you. It's not I'm, you. Not, I'm, I'm angry with Victoria, and she's dead, so I can't she's... shout at her. I've, I've just realised. I've just realised. Before I changed my name, I didn't have a middle name. I have now. Can anyone guess what it is? <laughs> Stop. Oh, it's in the comments. You Answer can't comments. change it again I'm, either. I am not changing it again. No. I am not. If anybody else in this, if I fall out with anybody else in this family, they are changing their <laughs> it's That's mine because now. some of them were born with it over 40 years ago is not my problem. Look, fuck <laughs> them. Right, yeah. carry on. Sorry, I'm going to stop. I'm going to get back in my box. Anyway. <sighs> I'm sorry. Mm. Yes. So Con he was Conroy's in. He was right. manipulative. He was a bully. She was obviously in a very vulnerable situation. He was like, yeah, I can take advantage of this, basically. So that's what that's what I'm going to do. So um, they come closer. He very much says has manipulated her. They were based at Kensington Palace, and he said to her, "We need your daughter to be safe. We can look after her. We can keep her safe. This is what all this is about. We will be it's preparing her to be safe. queen." Yeah, we will be preparing her to be queen. She will be a fabulous queen. We're going to put her forward almost in a way like Charlotte was, as a nice tonic to the rest of the Hanoverians. And we will pro we will produce this wonderful young lady who will be a perfect queen. And this is what this is all going to be about. It's all for her safety. Kat did mention earlier, you know, we want to stop her from being assassinated. We want to make sure she's around the right people, that, you know, everything's just, just going to be beautiful and perfect and wonderful. 
And um, so th this was kind of what he's saying. So we know obviously now that what he wanted to do is he wanted the power and this is how he wanted to do it because they thought, oh, if there's going to be a regency here, her mum can be the regent, but actually I'll be the one behind pulling the strings. So this was obviously his plan because he can control the mother so he can control the daughter, but he can also work on controlling the daughter at the same time. So they had this thing in place that was basically fancy prison, <laughs> what he was, wasn't it? Let's be honest. Fancy Borstal. Yeah. Bill, <laughs> Bill Bill. Fancy young offenders with nice dresses. N young offenders, Hanover edition. And frankly, <laughs> yeah. quite a lot of those buggers should have been in there, to be honest. They, they, the they, if, they... if you were going to yeah. pick some one of the Hanoverians to be in prison, it wouldn't have been her, but there was a good no. list of candidates. Yes. So yeah. uh, now we what could I have done with starting at the generation earlier. Yes. Oh, at least at least one. So I have here. Um, so this is from historyextra.com um about Victoria, what the Queen Victoria's unusual childhood, like the Kensington system palace, palace system, that anyway. So it's some history extra. So the eight rules of the Kensington system governed her childhood. One, Victoria was not allowed to spend time by herself, and she always had to sleep in her mother's room. Two, Victoria could not walk downstairs without holding the hand of an adult in case she fell. It sounds melodramatic, but Victoria did actually conform in later life. It was a rule that she had to abide by. Three, Victoria was not allowed to meet any strangers or third parties without her governess being present. Four, the young Victoria had to write in a behaviour book how well she'd behaved each day so that her mother could assess her progress. Sometimes it was good, sometimes it was very naughty. Five, Victoria could only appear in public on carefully stage-managed publicity tours. This was to distance her from the unpopular regime of her uncles, Kings George IV and William IV, and to present her as the nation's hope. Victoria 606 was not allowed to dance the scandalous and intimate new dance called the waltz, not even, as it is often said, with other royal relations. She would never waltz until married to Albert. Seven, Victoria had to build up her strength by exercising with Indian clubs, a pair of bowling pin shaped wooden clubs and a machine with pulleys and weights and was mandated to have plenty of fresh air. She would be a lifelong devotee of open windows. The young Victoria, <laughs> last of all, was not well, allowed to an open window. Well, it says her courtiers would be shivering. Eight, the young Victoria was not allowed to gorge on her food. She was allowed to eat bread with milk and plain roast mutton and was restricted from eating her favourite things, sweet meats and fruit. Victoire so... is the first almond mum. She is, she's an almond mum. It's an almond mum. It's it's basically it's it's a mum who's very concerned with her daughter's weight and appearance because she thinks that they're an extension of her. And so when her daughter's like basically, I don't know, on her period and feeling very hungry and wants to eat a cow raw, um, the <laughs> mum goes, It's all right, just have an almond and chew it slowly. Almond mum. It's it's fostering inappropriate relationships with food. And when you do that to a child their relationship with food for the rest of their life is fucked. So they eat their feelings. It's a good job my mum didn't know about that. If you, if you tell her, go and buy shares in almonds. <laughs> it was, um, oh, it wasn't it in later life though? She, she would, oh, no, she would eat really quickly, wouldn't she? Mm, mm. She would eat really quickly, wouldn't she? So wouldn't and she then if you hadn't finished. By the time they'd served, yeah, yeah. she gets up and leaves and there's people who easy. haven't eaten. She was yeah. probably worried that they were going to take just, it away from her. Yeah. Yeah. She, she she grew up in in a privation of food. Yeah, that's it's, so, it's abuse. It's it's utter. It's, it's oh yeah, definitely. I mean, without some a of doubt. these things, some of these things are mixed in, like getting fresh air, and you know, I can I can see that. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, of... I, I will I will also point out that like Indian clubs for us for a child are completely inappropriate. They're, they're, they are very heavy. It's it's weight training. That is not I'm something weight training. <laughs> but it's not something. It's not something that a child who's not developed should be using. You should you should you you should be fully grown before you start doing weight training. A child should well, not be know, doing weight training. Do we know when they started that with her? No, I, I cannot give you that information. I apologize for letting the side down. Well, I mean, she was more than, was... she was more than six months old and younger than eighteen. Yeah. yeah. So, so I do she know. Was, she was, she was a child. She wasn't. Accurate. She was a child. And the thing is, we do know as well that she remained very small. 
she never she never got um above five feet tall, so she was a very diminutive person, um, underfed. One wonders if she'd been properly fed, would she have reached a more normal height? Mm. Maybe. Mm. Well, well she... I don't know, she's not that much shorter than us. And I was uh, very hey, well hey, fed. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 what are you talking about? I'm five foot four. I'm five foot four. I am a giant. Oh, you've grown, have you? You've I, grown, I, I grew, have you? I did grow in pregnancy. I grew an inch. I grew an inch when I was uh, pregnant to five foot four. That's nuts. How did you do that? I have no idea. I, mean, I, went, I need... I need... Yeah. I went. I went. My, my my foot. My feet grew a size, and I went to get measured when I was first pregnant. She measured me, and she went, "You're five foot four. And I went, "No, I'm not." And then she went, "Yeah, you are." So within the first twelve weeks, I grew an inch. Interesting. I went down a shoe size. Did your arches go up because of the hormones? Did my what go up? Your arches must have gone up because of the hormones. I don't know. I, I think I just lost a lot of puppy fat. After I had mine. But anyway, there you go. Sorry, Catherine, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I hate, I hate to interrupt. But... That was a tangent. Welcome to our <laughs> tangent corner. Tangent. We love it. Love a bit of a tangent. Um, Beverly <laughs> says, I think she was four foot 11. I think she was actually, yeah. Yeah, so she didn't actually even make five foot. And I just, I do wonder if, I mean, they aren't a, they aren't a tall family necessarily, but that, like, if you see her clothes... She is diminutive, and one does mm. wonder: is that in part because of the of actually the fucking poor diet that she was fed? Mm. Interesting. Not enough almonds. There you go. Anyway, am I am I good? Yeah. So anyway, so it was meant to be all about keeping her safe, making her popular, all these sorts of things. But obviously, clearly, it was about manipulation, keeping her in her place. And Conroy was horrible to her, not just mm. in the sense that this was implemented, but he would berate her and name call her and pick at her and deliberately upset her. So obviously, she grew to just despise him in every capacity possible. Um, now... People often think, oh, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, that her mother and Conroy were, were married, and then they make this sort of a stepfathery figure assumption there. Um, but no, they weren't. So that there was a, a rumor spread um, by is it, is it, oh, Cumberland? It's it down somewhere. Yeah, the Duke Cumberland. They were in fact Richard Cumberland, as he gets known. Um, they he does. Yes, um, but they were Rick. lovers, and this is how you know that Conroy had managed to manipulate. Um, mummy victoria mm. so well because he you know he had her under as, 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 as his lover and everything like that i don't think there was ever any really sort of proper evidence for that it was i mean it's, I, I would say it's reasonably viable um especially as he was obviously a narcissist and a chief manipulator and mm. she was very possibly feeling quite icy you know, he we talk about how he isolated victoria he isolated her a little bit as well because yeah. everyone hated her everyone hated him it, it was just so they were a little bit and probably another way he could say look no one likes us we're in this together it's all these constant ways of layering on this the way the way you bring people down and you trap them and um you control them but for, you know you imagine as 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 any person but a teenager or you think of your whole life where well, you are never left alone for one single solitary mm -hmm. second. that's you very have, bizarre no privacy yeah, it, agony. It is, and that's that's a really abusive thing to do to anybody mm -hmm. but as a developing that's woman trying... in a time where you had to be you were expected well, to be extremely mm -hmm. private and um we would possibly use the word prudish now but that was how you were meant to be you were meant to be very private mm -hmm. and you know and there were certain things that you didn't you know you your, your ablutions and things like that you know so it was it's it horrendous it's really it sounds really like a way of infanticizing her keeping yeah. her mm -hmm. childlike yeah. under their uh, also, control I, I understand kind of keeping her hermetically sealed away from scandal i i, I do understand mm -hmm. that and threat but this woman this girl sorry child is going to be a woman who is going to be the queen and what that requires is meeting with politicians dignitaries ambassadors it is a diplomatic and social figurehead role to deny her in that adolescence the opportunity mm. to meet a variety of people is 
the poorest preparation they could possibly have given her. Yeah, but they don't want her to be prepared, do they? That's no, the exactly, point. exactly. So this notion that it's about preparing her, then if it's about preparing her, she should be out there conversing. Yeah. Pressing they're wanting the her to rely. Charming. Yeah, they want her to be reliant on them. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, I mean, it did keep her safe. No one assassinated her. <laughs> um, and actually, it created some sort of an allure around her that when she was out and about, people did really want to see her. They were very intrigued by her. They they seemed to, they did have an admiration for her. So it, she did, it did create her a little bit of a sort of a, a, a popularity in this sense of a new hope, like Star Wars, only not in space. Um, so she hated Conroy, and it wasn't until her mother's death. Well, no, there's this thing, isn't there, that she, it wasn't until her mum died that she realised how much she still loved her, because obviously the relationship was really damaged. But actually, some of the reading I found was that there, there was a little bit of repair going on before that, but I'll just touch on that. So but the idea is, as we said, if she became queen underage, there would be a regency, her mother would be the regent. Conroy would get a peerage and be her, Victoria's private secretary during the Regency and then presumably they were just going to carry this on. So he would basically have the power over both of these women, really. So what he then did is that he was trying to make the Duchess. So Mummy Victoria looked really popular as well against George the Fourth. So she'd be much better than George IV. Now, to be fair, it's not much of a competition, is it? No. We want someone better than George the Fourth. Well, here's everyone. <laughs> <laughs> one eeny meeny miny mo. So, um, and one another thing that Conroy did as well in, in, in this sort of thing was um, that he became close to the king's sister, Princess Sophia, um, who apparently was a little bit unstable. And he used to get her to spy on on George at court for him, feedback to him, and he also to help her out because she was helping him out. Took control of her finances. Anyway, in 1827, the Duke of York dies, death, died of death, and Victoria became second in line to Grand the throne. Grand Duke of York. Yep, became, yeah. she became second in line to the throne, so she's edging her way up at this point. So the Conroy at this point, and I don't know how he managed to do that. I don't know how, why the king kind of went for this. Well, because he didn't trust Conroy. I can't think why. He didn't trust Conroy. He didn't like him. He didn't feel he had that he had Conroy had any redeeming features whatsoever. Um, but Conroy persuaded the king that Victoria should not be around common commoners. She shouldn't be doing this, she shouldn't be doing that, and needed looking after. And he was made a knight commander of the Hanoverian Order. It's posh, isn't it? In 1829, the Duke of Cumberland spread a rumour that the two of them were lovers. I say how much credence there was at the time and there is now, we can't really say. The Duke of Clarence called him King John. So that was the perception that people had was that he was calling the shots. He was in charge. That was it. And his wife, uh, Clarence's wife, warned. She, she took some time out to say to Mummy Vicky, you know, this bloke is conning you. He's manipulating you. He is power grabbing. He's, you, you need to distance yourself from mm -hmm. him. She was like, no. No. Um, anyway, in 1930, Clarence becomes William the Fourth. 1930 or 1830, probably that one. He becomes William the Fourth, and at this point, he goes right. I'm going to try and get custody of, of this girl now. I, she's my niece. I'm her uncle. And but Conroy said no. We can't separate her, the mother and the daughter. That that would be terrible. So no, we can't happen. And so he decided that at that point it would be a good idea to take her on one of her promotional tours of the country. So basically, she's away from court, isn't she? And mm. um, people that people wanted to see her, they did flock to see if they could see her from a distance. And there's reports of bits of it that she quite enjoyed. She wanted because she got out and about, didn't she? Basically, mm. at the end of the day, and she was able to see different parts of the country and what they look like and what the people look like and how you know that that type of thing. It got a little bit of lot of life. Um, but while she was away, she became very poorly. I'll come back to, to that. Well, it, it was at this point, and I'll do that that way around. Um, but by this point, she she's getting to an age where um, a regency is looking less and less likely. And they're aware of this, obviously, because if she hits, you know, if she hits adulthood before and before she becomes queen, there is no need for the regency. And then they're in trouble. This plan is in trouble, basically. Mm. Um so even though her mother had been appointed regent in waiting while they went away on, on this trip, 
And um, so Conroy at this point um, tries to say project. So rather than bigging Victoria up as this new hope and this, this, that, and the rest of it, he starts saying that she's weak willed. She's a bit foolish. She, she can't really do things on her own. She always has to have people like him to assist her. You know, she can't. Really. So he, then he's trying to paint her as this sort of pathetic, feeble woman that even if she, you know, there's no reason, she's still going to need everyone around him because she's not really very good at what she does. And while she's poorly, he tries to get her to sign something to say that he will get the private secretarial ship um when she becomes queen at whatever age that is and she's like you can go fuck yourself and, so, and, and she has got typhus while this is going on yeah she's, she's like got, proper, she's you know really fucking sick yeah i mean so he's presumably taking things oh she's a bit delirious now's a good time to ask sort of but thing. so she does have a wherewithal without with her wherewithal yeah. Yeah, to that, say yeah. no. Mm. Yeah. Because one of the things we both love and hate about Victoria and what makes her into such a fucking terrible human being as an adult is that she is, she has a will of iron mm. through her. Stubborn. <laughs> bloody minded uh, and, and frankly, immovable object, irrepressible force. She's both of those things. Um, and that probably saves her from Conroy's ministrations, but it also makes her a diabolical friend, wife and mother. These are not attractive attributes in somebody <laughs> who doesn't have to fight for their life. Mm. It's a bit of a, a no winner all round, really, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, in 1837, Victoria is 18 and she becomes queen. No regency. Hey. Oh, no. What a shame. Hey. Sucks to be you. <laughs> yeah, William, like, hung on by his like, fingernails. <laughs> to make like, I will it. I will not die until she is of age, because fuck <laughs> these two. I don't care what I have I will to do. survive. <laughs> <laughs> Spite survival. Spite survival. <laughs> anyway, so uh, one of the first things she does, Victoria, when she becomes queen, is she banishes um, Conroy from court. Good times. But the, um, the Prime Minister at the time, Lord Melbourne, to kind of buy some of the silence and keep things flowing a bit evenly, was kind of obliged to agree. So this guy gave some demands while he was being sent away at court. And but one of those included a barony and an oh, income of so £3,000 pounds a year. Okay, oh, he remained, and, and even after all this, he still remained in Mummy Vicky's household, even after Victoria. And so she took them both at that point and went, Right, I'm shipping you out of Kensington. And she found some quite out the way rooms at the back of Buckingham Palace and kind of just installed them in there to, to get rid of them and keep them out of the way. Anyway, a couple of years later, I, I haven't gone into lots of detail about the rest of his life. Yes, I'm, but I'm going to do the. Um, um, he went after. off into kind of a, a sort of self imposed exile, came back a few years later. Something to do with farming, died in a lot of debt. Good. No one, no one cared. Um, after he died, the Duchess, the Duke of Kent, Mummy Victoria, said, oh, yeah, he basically swindled me out of huge, huge piles of money. He'd in and also had between, um, from her brother, of so Victoria, and the king, um, he had taken £60,000. Um, various gifts what and with things it? like that and up the wall because he died in debt and um also said that um um she that he because of him her relationship let me finish before you have an aneurysm cat her relationship <laughs> with her daughter had suffered as a result of Conroy <laughs> Mm. Okay, but King William had never trusted him um, uh, or Victoria. She, he, you know, he, Mummy Victoria, she never trusted either of them. But his last birthday dinner, he basically <laughs> stood up and just slagged the shit out of both of them. Victoria's crying. Mummy Victoria's fuming. You know, it's all it's proper like Jeremy Kyle Sounds family great. dinner. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? That's kind of um, when he was coming yeah. in, when she was coming of age, her uncle offered her her own household, which is actually a pretty decent thing to do for all the Georgia folk was a bit of a penis. But the best part, he did seem to see what was happening to Victoria and wanted to try maybe to get her out of that situation. Um, but of course, there was no way that Conroy and Mummy Victoria were going to go for that. Once Victoria finds out she's queen, so the A, B of C turns up with his bods and says, oh, she's queen. Hey, lovey, I'm doing the after the, I'm doing it when she becomes queen. I've got that. Oh, no, 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 I'm just, I'm just okay. saying, no, I'm not, I'm not, okay. go, I'm not going all into that. But he turns up and she won't let them wake her up to tell her that she's queen. 
She's there for a good hour or more before she agrees to let them wake her up. Obviously, even though she knows it's coming, it's quite emotional. So she does cry on her mother's shoulder a bit. But then it's just very telling that the first thing but really is what she says is just everyone just get out and leave me alone. I just mm. want to be She's on never been on her own. My Incredible. own. And then the next thing after that was she wanted her bed removed from the bed chamber she shared with her mother so that she could have her own bed. Just those little, little things of privacy. So obviously it had done a lot of damage to their relationship for very obvious reasons. Um, she would not change her mother's rank and title. The relationship did deteriorate still further after a while. And this is the thing, like people don't know when to give up. I suppose it, maybe it was some form of desperation, but the Duchess kept trying to push Conroy back into Victoria's household to get her to, to reinstate him in some sort of capacity. So that well, of course done a made good her job mother on her, clearly. exactly. Mm. So she just didn't trust her mother. You know, we're out of this situation, and he's still pushing me. And even things like you know, when she got engaged to Albert, she didn't tell her mother straight away. She was that like, I was. I would see it as almost a form of punishing her. You know, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to be the one I don't know. Um, but, yeah, it, it got to a point where when Victoria and Albert had children, she was apparently quite a doting grandmother. And she did confess at that point. She said, I admitted, she admitted, well done, that her relationship with Conroy had caused issues with her daughter. And apparently at this point, Victoria was kind of meant to say, well, you know, let's just let's just leave it it's, it's done it's fine um yeah so when in 1859 she was poorly mummy vicky and um sorry mummy vicky was really quite concerned about her mother's health but basically um it, it was just a question of you're gonna die i know you're gonna die I'm just going to have to go around making the best I can of this because you are, you've taken everything from this relationship. All I've got left is to say to you, you were rubbish. <laughs> you, um, does that make sense? I'm not getting my words together very well here, but basically <sighs> she accepted when her mother was nearly dead. She then turned around and went, okay, now that she's nearly died, I'm reflecting on this. Then she recovered her health. And I think that had made Victoria then look at that relationship and think, well, it was very fraught. We didn't have this good relationship for such a long time. She's been a great grandmother to my children. And I suppose she maybe reflected on it as an adult. And when her mother did pass away, she was quite upset. She realised how much she meant to her, really. But it was just so difficult because they'd had such a fractured relationship for so long. I think I got the words out that I was trying to get out there in the end. It got a bit jumbled there in the middle. I'm sorry about that. But in, oh God, however I word this, Kat's going to come through the screen and stab me in the face. Well, I mean, the thing is, you've mostly covered what I was going to talk about. No, so in, sort of... in, in, in her defence, before anyone gets angry, I'm just trying to like, in her defence, what we're talking about, she, you know, she didn't want to stay in England. She had to, I think she, this is a reason, not an excuse. I think that she felt alone, unpopular, vulnerable, wasn't sure what the future held. And at the beginning, you've got somebody who makes it look like they could help you and your daughter, because obviously she's thinking about her daughter. And then before you know where you are, you're in a situation and you're thinking... I'm not sure how I can get out of this at this point. And you know what people do. It's the human condition. And I'm not saying that this is OK, is that they don't want to think that they're wrong. No one wants to think they're wrong. No one wants to think they've made a mistake. And the bigger the fuck up is, the more you don't want to think about it. All right. So I think she she was just maybe like when she was trying to get Conroy to come back in, maybe that was just maybe even to try and rehabilitate the situation. She must have known what she was doing. You know, she must have seen the effect that this was having on her child. And I, too, do not for a variety of reasons. I find it's, it's a bit close to home for me to look at a mother to, see, is to be in a situation where a mother has let someone else be abusive to their child that's close to home for me and I um so I'm not trying to defend her in any way because to everybody else this was like a whole field of red flags around this dude I mean Jesus Christ almighty 
I'm, I'm just trying to sort of think of it. Why would she do that? Why would she let this happen to her daughter? And I think maybe her initial her initial isolation and vulnerability led to some exceptionally poor and unacceptable decision making, which allowed her child to be put through this abusive childhood. And um, I, I, I think that she could have, despite that, though, she probably had enough associations with other people across Europe not just in the UK to make a better choice I think she got in so far and then she didn't know what to do and she was too weak-willed to do anything about it but you can't be weak-willed like that when you have a child depending on you really well that was the odd thing is she's done the regency bit before and then with Victoria she seemed to be taken in by Conroy and anyway so yeah that was the odd bit for me about that bit yeah, it, it is. Yeah, it's difficult. It's it's quite nonsensical. I think you know, as as we we're all mothers, and we can't imagine like no. watching somebody hurt our child and just sit back and watch it. Like you mm. know, when that person doesn't need to be in their life, mm. nobody, nobody, nobody would have cared if Conroy had gone. Yeah, like I'm, no I'm one. Also, I'm also. I will not buy into product of the time. There's always a choice. There were plenty yeah. of parents. There are plenty of parents both before this period uh, and certainly after that loved their children and made choices. Like the, the notion of, I mean, even back in the Tudor period, the notion, they were questioning mm. this notion of spare the rod, spoil the child. Mm. The the humanistic understanding of how to educate a child mm. about about with, with non-violent methods was already in force. Not everybody's beating their kids. By no means is everyone beating their kids. No. It's not. It's not. So it might be more normal than it is now, but it wasn't everybody because everybody has a choice. I think and I suppose my my made. my bee in my bonnet is not so much about your immediate family. What mine is, and what mine is, is with her. I should have made this a little bit clearer, really, is that he's an outsider. So mm. it's like an outsider or a step parent figure those types of people that don't need to be in the equation oh, no, that were brought in they were outside people being brought into the equation that didn't have to be there that mm. i think is my issue with that it, it's those situations because family dynamics are bizarre things and they're dealt with internally and some people are in those situations and that's how it is mm. but when somebody comes in externally like that and sometimes it starts off all right, but then when it's very obviously getting to the place where that person has come in as an outside force and is doing a lot of damage, they need to be an outside force again. You yeah. don't open the door a bit more and invite them in for a cup of tea. Yeah. And a biscuit. Yeah. We are severely overrunning. Yeah. Um, and we've still got one section to go, so... <laughs> I think we um, should are we do, are we, Have we got a past problems post bag? We do have a past please? problems post bag. We do. Yeah. Let cool. me bring it up. Oh, God. I've got to find it now. Let me see if I <laughs> Where everything out. shut down. I've now got to find it. Well, don't worry. My bit will be quick because Catherine covered most of it. So, <laughs> yes. Oh, I don't know if, I, to be quite honest with you, I don't know if I can find it now where I had to shut everything down. Oh, no. You have no. to now because we have donned the. Oh, okay. Where's yours? Where's yours? It's, hang on, I'm I'm searching. I'm searching for where it was, and that because it was open in a different window. Oh no! I know, and oh, then we man. had to. You've got to learn tech. Oh no! <laughs> well, no, it's because everything everything shut down because I had to do it, and then I had yeah. to come in really quickly. And now it's lost. And now it is a bit. How can it be lost? There's got to be somewhere. Where did you? Where was it? In your emails. It was open in a, in a one of them. I'll, I'll, I'll do it and then I'll find it and then I'll get me veil. All right. Yeah. It doesn't well, we know what the answer is going to be anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever yeah, the answer is, it's going to be poison. So it's, 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 it's if, if in doubt, the solution, I don't know is, the solution is poison. I can't. I can't find it. Oh, my goodness. Well, okay. Um, This is not legal advice, obviously, but... um. <laughs> The Widows of Lancaster are channeling, and we are 
whatever you're I'm I'm getting some I'm channeling and I'm hearing all of your problems in in my head aren't you ladies are you getting the problems are you hearing all of them I like I like shutting myself off to other people's problems I've got all the problems problems in my head and for every single one of you the solution is poison yeah oh there we go every time full back position have have we um have we are we going to give up on this uh, I don't know where it's gone. I'm really annoyed. We'll do it next week. We'll do it. Next I mean, week, I can yeah. probably. Put, I've got another one I can pull up from the email. Um, as well. Let's go for it because we are running out of time, and Cat needs a bath. <laughs> I do. I do. Already have this... Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we talked about the spite survival of King William the Fourth. So he. He literally despite waits survival. until she's despite survival until yeah, but... she is eighteen. Oh, there is, of course, um, one other person in the Kensington system who is a regular attender, who I think we haven't mentioned, who needs mentioning because in the aftermath of um, Victoria becoming queen, stuff happens, and that is Letson, yes. who is mm. Victoria's governess, mm-hmm. and in some ways, I think her mother and Conroy make a mistake with Letson because she becomes, and it's also worth pointing out that a lot of what we're talking about here and discussing is based upon the diaries that Victoria kept. And Victoria in her diaries throughout her life is prone to some rather effusive language. She does seem to quite like the idea of herself as this poor fatherless girl. She very much leans into that sort of fairy tale, um, hard done by. So a lot, perhaps a, so it's worth pointing out that some of the narratives we get about how awful and wicked it was, this is from a child's diary who doesn't have a lot of friends. And it's actually maybe a bit spoiled um, because she isn't, she isn't cowed by any of it. You know, mm-hmm. she is the sort of person that will shut her piano teacher's fingers in the piano because she doesn't want to practice anymore. Um, she she ha- she is prone to spite of her own. Whatever the experience of this is, and I don't doubt there were horrors involved, it doesn't in any way um, cow Victoria into being obedient or submissive. So one might wonder whether it's a case that it just didn't work or whether the narrative we're getting is perhaps made worse than it may have been because we're getting it from her diaries. That's just thing I want to flag. So Letson is the governess. Letson is uh, a person whom Victoria feels, little Victoria feels that she can unburden her heart to. She, She writes in ways where she almost wishes that Letson was her mother. And there's no doubt in my mind that mummy Victoria read that. Because she read everything, mm. she didn't. There was not mm. one. There was not one participle of Victoria's person that was allowed to be private from her mother. The thought that she isn't reading her diary, that she's making, that they're making her write, mm. is unfathomable. So when she's writing these spiteful things about how horrible her life is, bear in mind that she knows her mother is going to be reading them in real mm. time. Which I think is also interesting. Um, it is interesting. So is she learning I'll, to manipulate also? My question is she is mm. is she learning to sort of go, this is the legacy, this is the guilt trip, this is what's happening. When um Victoria ascends to the throne, uh as we as we know, Conroy is out. <laughs> um Victoria keeps her mother at arm's length. She wheels her out for ceremonial purposes. <laughs> Victoria um moved into Buck Buck Palace. Her mother is sent away to Belgrave Square. Um, So it's nearby, but it's further than she had ever been from her. Mm -hmm. Um, Her biographer, Elizabeth Longford, wrote, quote, as the Queen's mother, the Duchess found her trials increased. Victoria quitted her bedroom. Night fell on the Duchess for nearly three gloomy years. At the coronation, Queen Victoria kissed her aunt, Queen Adelaide, but only shook her mother's hand. So that's in public. Ouch. Letson's still there. Letson remains. And Victoria is going to, in her mind, perpetuate 
the Letson relationship with her own children. The problem is that Victoria attracts control freaks and another thing, control freak that she has is Albert. And Letson is also a control freak. These are, these are in every instance here, I think whether it's Mummy Victoria, Conroy, Little Victoria, Albert, Letson, these are personalities. These are potentially all a bunch. This is a basket of fucking narcissists. It's what we have here, friend. It's a basket of narcissists. Um, <laughs> And basically, is that the collective Al- term for narcissists? Is it? it is now. It's a basket of narcissists. And basically, um, Albert takes a dislike to Letson, and he orchestrates it essentially that she is sent away. And bearing in mind as well that this is that she that Victoria is queen, um, and this woman has been like a mother to her, but she has clearly transferred her allegiance in some way and, cho- and chosen to do so because what's Albert mm. going to do? Leave? Okay. Off you fuck. Um, <laughs> but he doesn't do that. So Victoria sends Letson away. Then after Letson goes, interestingly, the Dowager Duchess, Duchess of Kent is back at court. She's welcomed back into the company of her daughter, her son-in-law, and this growing brood of grandchildren. And her nephew. <laughs> yeah. So, she, so she's, she, yeah, her, 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 yeah, her son-in-law slash nephew. So she is back in this kind of family environment. Now, what Victoria feels about this and how much this is Albert's doing in Albert's sort of shaping this vision of royalty that is recognisable and identifiable with an upper middle class Englishness, those kind of Christmas cards and everyone around the tree, um, mm. that, that that he 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 kind of he brands the royal family, and I think that he recognises that having his children's grandmother, his own mother being dead, of course, having his children's grandmother there and present and visible and knowledgeable and not having this conflict that could be reported on is the best PR he can do. I don't know what the feelings are at this time, but she's there. After her death in 1861, Victoria is suddenly fucking wrapped with guilt. She is bereft at the loss of her mother. She, you know, sits on her fainting couch, needs her smelling salts. So as as Catherine was saying, does this mean she's forgiven her? Or is being an adult, has she reassessed what's happened? The thing that I, I would say is that in the world of Victoria's diary, which is where we get this story from, and which is perhaps what shapes her understanding of her reality as well, Alexandrina, as she was, is this poor, friendless, fatherless girl. You know, she could only hang out with Conroy's children and selected handpicked people. That Conroy was this monster, this demon incarnate, she calls him, that her mother throws her to. Um, that Letson alone was her ally, her the mother she wished she had. That Conroy and her mother had worked in collaboration to make her suffer, to keep her from developing, from to keep her from being her, her a real kind of adult person. She kind of has heroes and villains. So Conroy and her mother are villains. Letson is a hero. She sees her uncle William as a hero. She she idolizes her father. If he was still alive, everything would be okay. Um, and she, she definitely sort of, I think, likes to separate people into a binary. And I, I wonder if that is a foible in her, in her character, or if that is a response to trauma that when she's been so, that if the upbringing was as bad as it looks from the outside, is Victoria, little Victoria's response to kind of go good and evil, um, safe and unsafe because because living in the binary is the only way to protect herself. I don't know. Um, but either way, I think that her mother did, even if there is a kind of hyperbolic narration of the life that Victoria lived, and even though she found a way to forgive her mother, there is an element to which that's because she's, to my mind, in another controlling, coercively controlling relationship with her husband and him telling her that 
Letson's got to go and your mum's back in. To survive that, you have to do some mental gymnastics, mm. I think. And so the grief that she feels at her death is that because she'd been gaslit into loving her by Albert. Mm. Mm. I don't know, though. I think there's, there's with any broken relationship, there is a grief when that person actually, when that person dies, that there is, there is, it is actually, that was what it was and there is no way back. I mean, I've seen this with, mm. you know, with people, especially when they lose parents because your parents have always been there. It's kind of like you've never been without your parents. This sounds so logical. Not Victoria. You, mm. So not for Victoria. So there is always tomorrow and then suddenly there isn't tomorrow to fix anything. Mm. And I think we can't underestimate that there is a real grief that comes yeah. with that regret um, yeah. as well. I do think Albert was just very, um, see, I, I mean, we can't, we haven't got time to go into it now, but of course, Alva, Albert has an incredibly tragic awful, upbringing. Awful childhood. And with a shitty the idea, father. Mm. A, a shitty father who, and who banishes his mother and just awful. And so there's also a, a, an element in his story that makes me think that, he was chasing the ideal family that he mm. did not want that to happen. And the idea therefore then that the, the, you know, the, the children's grandmother that so his, his mother couldn't be involved with his children that he would want their, their, mm. their surviving grandmother to have that involvement. And that, yeah. you know, there's, so I, I don't know, I'm not quite as convinced that there's quite so much narcissism going on as, as, the, as you are. I think there are other explanations that could also be. Um, mm. I think when, what we have is a, is a group of people who come from extraordinary privilege, all of them. There is, there is well, always going to be. Privilege and tragedy at the same time. Yeah. Like privilege that hasn't kept them safe. Oh, mm. I hate using that word now, but hasn't kept them out of harm's <laughs> way in terms of. I know why a, you're saying that. A, yeah, a really <laughs> fucked up childhood. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, we it see that repeated them. in the royal family as well. But like, you know, so this they have the ultimate privilege and yet it hasn't kept them from it out of harm's way. No. And in yeah. some ways they they were in more of a position where they needed to put up and shut up to protect the succession and to not and publicly humiliate people and there's no moving out when they're 16 and going and getting a job down a coal mine no like they, they have they're stuck and they yeah, must realize they have stuck. any choice it's such a trap mm. it's it, the cage is it's it's gilded but it's a cage and it just i think that but at the same time what what was done to victoria like some of it could have been bad judgment some of this shit was inexcusable. In I think it's a combination. I think it started off as bad judgment, and then it became. But then became. It, it became, she had. It, she, it however tricky it was, however lonely she was, ever like, he didn't. He didn't need to be there. She didn't need him financially. Victoria didn't like, love him. He wasn't an actual protective person. You know, he, he wasn't a blood relation. And he wasn't, do you know what I mean? There was no need I for wonder, him to be there. Well, I wonder, it, it when his, I wonder when his debt started as well. But I mean, again, we haven't yeah, got time and I don't know the answer, but I wonder whether he had. I've, I've often wondered if, if part of the reason why he got I paid so, off. Philippa, yeah, I do. I've often wondered if part of the reason why he got paid off was because uh, he knew things. I wonder oh, if the way Conroy yeah. gets around things is he's a he's a knower of things, and that kind of intelligence costs money. Mm -hmm. um, well, a knower or a maker upper of, I yeah. mean, he could fabricate stuff, or he might have just been a right royal, not royal, but trying to be royal, pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you are. Have some money and fuck, fuck off. off. Yeah, don't talk. And when away. you get there, Go fuck away. off from there as fuck well. Off some more. Yeah, but I think fuck also off some more. It's, I think you know the focus being that Conroy is the one shouting at Victoria and that and this that the, the other thing. But like, he's not. He's never alone with her. Like, mm. her True. mother is either in the room or just out of the room. So she's either joining in or she's condoning it. 
at the mm-hmm. very least. So everything he mm-hmm. does is either at her command, because let's remember the power imbalance. He's the equerry. He's the servant. And very, she's the yeah. she's the duchess. Who's done so, it all before. That's what I really don't understand. So it's either being done at her commandment explicitly and expressly or with her consent. Mm. Everything. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Well, we will score her in a couple of weeks' time and people can have their say. I don't think it's going to go well for her, if I'm being honest. No. So... um, my phone is about to die, so we will. We have better to do our things quickly. Let's do our things Look at what's quickly. happening next week. <laughs> well, next week we are on to at W, <laughs> and um, <laughs> we're actually <laughs> discussing. <laughs> oh, is it no, no? Well, <laughs> sorry. Well, <laughs> in in the uh, in sign language, BSL, we are yeah. um, we're discussing. Uh, well, he has many uh, names: William the, the Scarlet Conk. Pimpernel. William of Normandy, William the Bastard, William, William the, the Bastard, William mm-hmm. the Bastard. We like that one. Uh, yeah, so he is. He's our topic for next week. He's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, he's getting it. And we've only got one it. one more selection. Yeah, then it's round. Yeah, round up week the week after. And then we've got three more to go. Then we've got X Y Z. And those those are hard those are hard letters. I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Were, they were, oh, we, we've had a couple of stretches recently. I think you'll we see a couple a more. Real, <laughs> the reach that we've pulled muscles with that reach that we've been doing. But hey, yeah. If, if you want to do one your own of the... den of git, den of gits, and X Y Z, it you crack on. If you can yeah. do better, make your own. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Yeah, so we, oh, we've got dear. one. That's, uh, anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll, right. we'll see it. We'll, we'll um, see after. Buy us a coffee. You can, if you want to support Ooh, us, that. you yes. can um, go to www. It's just left the screen. Buy me, uh, yeah, buy me a coffee. coffee. Dot com. Dot com. Forward slash, slash had podcast. Had podcast. That's it. Um, you can also get. You can also find all of our information on um the other thing. Uh, which is <laughs> not 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 Skillshare. That's different. It's a different that is word. We're on Substack. Our link Substack and, and Substack. Is... Yeah, Substack. Oh, I, I couldn't remember the word Substack. Thingy. I'm just I couldn't remember it. it was the just, we're going across. There you go, Philip. Was beautifully tied. History of Stark Hub. Hub. All one Dot word. Substack. Dot Substack. Com. Com. That was perfect. Sign up for that. If you timing. um if you have a past problem <laughs> post bag, then please email it to us. Oh look, this is amazing. She's there at gmail.com please also you can find us on our own various social medias um mm. on the youtubes the instagrams the tiki tocks uh where are you where are you uh catherine where are you found oh i am on youtube as the historical collaborator and on instagram just as historical collaborator lovely and philippa i'm on youtube at at british history uh and instagram at british underscore history underscore tours they're my main places to find fabulous and uh you can find me on youtube reading the past instagram tiktok threads twitter at some variation of cat or katrina marchant because i didn't think to use the same bloody handle across all (laughs) of them so (laughs) it's search search cat marchant probably one of them will come up there you go. Yeah, you'll um, find her. Do we have anything you'll else to discuss? Uh, merch. Buy, buy our merch. We have merch. Hashtag spons. <laughs> hashtag ad. Yeah, we have a link in our bio. We have a link. Placement. We have links on our YouTube channel. So you can find, you can get to us uh, on our <laughs> merch just... in that yeah. way. So and if you, you want me a coffee. We've, um, I've got to look at some, like, some more bits to go up. So if, if you want a collector's item, then buy mm. one of these now because this has still got the Brooks thing on it. So, yeah, what you better Brooks will be you, going. Yeah, so you you can either wait to get one with it, or you can keep it as a collector's piece. What I've just found? I don't know where this is from. I've just found some Dragon's detritus. Glass. It's not glass. It's some sort of it's fabric. Don't glass. know what it is. Nothing I'm wearing oh, is fabric. this color. I don't know what this is. That's arrived. Oh, know she that. goes again. Someone doing broke that into thing. your house. Put it there and left. It's the only. Left place made a dress. Oh, borrowers are there. Do we ship to Canada? I think it ships everywhere. It's print and demand. Right? It ships everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes. I need right. a Timmy mug from we'll say yes to him. Do it. Timmy is a problem. You do. Um, you definitely do. Brilliant. Shall I, shall I count us yes. out? Yes, let's go. Right. Thank you all. We'll see you all next time. Um, don't know. I don't know what it is, but I, I found it. Um, I'm going to count us out. That is. You can keep that for later. Three, two, one. Bye. Bye.